Hello everyone, my name is Abu Bakr and I'm one of the core maintainers of Gradio. As you may have seen, we just launched Gradio 5. And as part of Gradio 5, one of our main goals was to make it really easy for Python developers to create machine learning web applications that are not only you know, beautiful, that work well, but that also are secure, that follow the best practices when it comes to web security. So in order to do that, we actually worked with Trail of Bits uh, we asked them to conduct a, an independent security audit of Gradio. So they looked at the entire Gradio code base, and to their credit, they got up to speed very quickly, and they basically poked it for any sort of security issues that they could find. Um, and they found uh, a, bunch of Gradio, uh, a bunch of security issues. And so what we did before releasing Gradio 5 was to go through each one of those issues and mitigate the issue, solve it, make sure that it was not present, so that when we released Gradio 5, we could have you know, we could provide assurances to Gradio users like yourselves that when you build a Gradio application with Gradio 5, that is going to be secure by default um, out of the box. And so what I'd like to do in this video is actually to talk through some of the main uh, security findings that Trail of Bits found, uh, because in the, in the spirit of openness and transparency, we're also actually making the report public. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. But I also wanted to just talk through some of the main findings because I'm hoping that this will actually be useful to you as either a Gradio user or maybe as someone who's you know, a developer to generally be aware of these concepts because they could affect you as you're building web applications using Gradio or any other framework as well. So let's, let's talk about these issues. So before I jump into it, there's four general areas, four scenarios where security threats present themselves. So the first uh, scenario is when you're running a Gradio app locally. Yes, even if you're running a Gradio app locally on your computer, there are certain security considerations. The second scenario, the second uh, scenario where security threats present themselves is when you deploy a Gradio application on a server. That could be Hugging Face Spaces, which if you don't already know, you can check it out, Hugging Face Spaces, a free place to host your Gradio applications, or it could be your own server or any other server. Uh, the third scenario is when, again, you share your Gradio application, uh, but with a share link. So Gradio uh, has this built-in sharing mechanism. So when you launch a Gradio app, you can set share equals true in the launch method. And what that does is it creates this share link for you, a very simple public URL that other people can use to access and run your Gradio applications. Um, now that's very simple, but it it has similar kind of security issues to number two, but there are kind of there are certain uh, unique security considerations that we have to think about. Uh, and finally, the fourth uh, scenario, which is kind of interesting, is uh, the Gradio CI, the, our, our pipeline, we run certain things on every commit uh, to the Gradio code base, including commits from contributors. And what kind of vulnerabilities does that expose into Gradio uh, supply chain vulnerabilities if you are importing Gradio and using it? Now, many of these I will mention affect not just Gradio, but many of the open source projects out there. And that's one of the goals of, of Bill of, of sharing this video is to actually have you, if you are a, an open source maintainer or a developer, to look at your own code and see maybe you are you know affected by some of these vulnerabilities as well. Uh, so let's jump into it. So we'll start with running locally. And I'll, I'll mention, by the way, I've, this video kind of assumes a general knowledge of Gradio. If you have not used Gradio before, go check out the Gradio website, gradio.app, G-R-A-D-I-O dot app. Uh, check out a quick start, a tutorial. That's going to make these issues much more relevant. Uh, you're going to have the context to understand these issues. So, okay, so let's say you're running a Gradio app locally. What can go wrong? Uh, the main issue there is cores, you know, cross-origin requests. So what is cores? Uh, the idea with cores and, and these core settings is you want to be able to restrict what kind of, what websites can make requests uh, to other websites or to your local or to anything that's running on localhost. So when you run a Gradio application on localhost, localhost 7860, um, we had some core settings in place that would that would prevent third party websites from making requests to you. Uh, so why is that important? So, so let's say you're running a Gradio app locally, you know, cool, you know, it's on port 7860 by default. Now you go visit another website and that website could present itself as just a, hey, here's a Gradio tutorial or something but it's actually a malicious website that can make requests to localhost 7860 or wherever your Gradio app is running. And it can start, for example, trying to upload files to it. 
I can try to guess at what you know what that you're what you might be running. Maybe you're running a very popular radio app locally. It can try to make requests, run stuff on your computer, get predictions, and you know get stuff back uh, to that website. So that's very very important. Um, and you do not want third party websites to be making requests. Now in Radio Four, we already had some settings that would prevent cores requests from coming in. However, there were ways to overcome those settings. Uh, uh, in particular, if the request had a cookie or if it was originating from the null origin. Now, this is a very specific thing, but it turns out that uh, there are, uh, uh, a third-party website can be running in... Uh, so normally, there's an origin. You can see where the request is coming from, but it can set the, the origin to null, which is kind of a setting that happens, for example, if a website is running in an iframe or something like that. And uh, that would go through our core's middleware, and we would not block that request like we would, like we should have been. Now, there are certain legitimate reasons to actually want to allow these requests to come in. Uh, and if you don't want to prevent this, like certain cases could be if you're embedding radio using web components on certain files in your local file system or something, you, we, you can actually pass in a parameter called strict cores and set it to false. But by default, cores is very strict. We prevent all these kinds of requests from coming in. Uh, for security reasons. So in Radio 5, this issue has been fixed. All right, so now let's move on to the second scenario. And again, I'll mention that this is a, just a short video. We're not covering everything, but the full report is public. You can take a look at it. Um, now, let's say you deploy your Hugging Face, uh, your Radio application on Hugging Face or on your own server. What do you have to think about? Well, uh, <clears throat> one issue is that we try, we prevent f you from we prevent users of your Gradio application from accessing files that are outside of certain directories, um, outside of like the working directory of the Gradio app and so on. Uh, it turns out that, however, that this can be bypassed um, in certain ways. Uh, it's not trivial, but it can be bypassed. And so uh, one of the things that, again, in Gradio 5 we fix is, is preventing people from being able to bypass this. Another issue is that you can actually kind of spam these servers. You can spam Hugging Faces spaces or your own server. And if you do that in a very particular way, you can actually cause other users of that Gradio application, their traffic to get redirected. This is a very clever bug that a trail of bits found. Um, and you know it has, has been since been patched. Now, uh, there's more issues. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, XSS, so this is cross-site scripting. So basically, the idea here, this is, I don't, it is a security issue, but it's kind of an interesting one in the sense that it kind of is, it, it involves some social factors as well. So let's say you deploy an app on a hugging face basis. One of the things that Gradio does is it allows you to upload files to that app, right? Typically, like if, if you know, let's say it accepts images, well then now you can up upload images. You can upload an SVG. Now then you can take that link to that SVG file, which is going to be something like hugging face, a space the name of your space, and now you have the SVG file. Um, and then you can send that to somebody else. Now that person might see the Hugging Face domain and say, oh, this is a reliable file. You know, it's from Hugging Face. But really it's not. It's from that third party person, whoever uploaded it. And they could click on it and, you know, SVG file will open in their browser. And it turns out SVG files can actually contain JavaScript in them. Uh, they can contain scripts that could do malicious things. And so we actually don't want certain types of files to open in the browser. And we want them to be downloaded instead so you can inspect the file and so on. So that's kind of the standard way to deal with uh, cross-site scripting, uh, XSS. Um, and so now uh, that's the case in Radio 5 as well. Similarly, SSRF, this is actually a very, um, a, a very uh, difficult issue to fully address, but uh, I think we've done a pretty good job in Radio 5. Um, basically, you want... Uh, you don't want, let's say you have a Gradio app running on a server, you don't want people to be able to use that Gradio app to fetch arbitrary third-party URLs because then they could use that Gradio app to run a DOS attack, a denial of service, a distributed you know, denial of service attack. They don't, you don't want to be able to call, uh, cause a Gradio app to call a third-party URL. But at the same time in Gradio, we do want to be able to pass in you know, third-party URLs as values into an image file, you know, an image component or an audio component or things like that. Um, so this is uh, something that you know we've we've dealt with. Um, it's a uh, it's a relatively complex fix. Um, we're actually thinking about ways to make this, uh, you know, exporting this out maybe as a, an independent library so that more developers, more 
you know, developers of web frameworks can actually use this, uh, use our patch, use our solution in their own applications. All right, what about when you deploy Gradio with a share link? Many of the things I just mentioned also apply in this scenario. Uh, for example, uh, you know, things like XSS attacks and so on. But there's a, their own set of uh, kind of issues as well with share links. It turns out that um, the communication, sorry, between your, so what happens when you create a share link is that there's a Gradio app running locally, but then there's a, the Gradio servers that establish a connection to your local computer. And then you share that a kind of public link externally. Now the problem is that this connection was not secure, uh, was not over SSL, I guess you could say. Um, and so it, it, somebody could snoop into this traffic and actually read and intercept the messages that are going back and forth from your computer to uh, the radio servers. Let's say you're in kind of a public Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or something like that. Um, and so uh, that's one of the things that we have fixed. Uh, we've uh, developed a new version of the FRP client that lets you do this. This FRP stands for fast reverse proxy. That's the method that's used here to establish this connection. Um, and we also do some other things that are not as severe, but uh, help kind of increase the, the security around this connection. Finally, I'll talk about the Gradio CI, some of the supply chain vulnerabilities. <clears throat> one issue, and I'll start with this one on the right, this one's a relatively simple one, uh, making sure that GitHub Actions are, are pinned to very specific versions. We don't want developers of GitHub Actions to be able to change their GitHub Action, which would you know affect our um, our what, what is run in our CI, and you know they could potentially exfiltrate secrets and things like that. Um, and so now everything is pinned, and we use tools like Semgrep to make sure that it stays that way. Um, and then there are some very very uh, concerning security vulnerabilities around GitHub Actions that I think many people who use GitHub Actions don't know about. And this is something that we discovered as as this was actually reported to us through GitHub, um, it turns out that uh, if you run anything on a on a contributed PR, so let's say you have an open source repo and you want to accept contributions, well, you accept a contribution, but you want to run CI on that, right? You want to make sure that it passes your tests. Now, some of your tests may involve, it may use tokens. And even if you're very careful not to let third-party kind of developers run arbitrary stuff like using your token, turns out that they can take the machines that were run and they can dump the memory of those machines and any secret they can actually leak in that memory. Very complicated kind of issue, but it's something that is concerning. And so we actually redid our entire CI pipeline and a uh, huge shout out here to uh, uh, GitHub handle PNGWN, Pete on our team, <laughs> who did a great job um, refactoring our CI uh, to make sure that this was no longer possible. Um, so, that, that is something that uh, uh, we fixed as well. And, 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 and that's something that you actually don't have to worry about upgrading your version of Gradio, that, that's more of our own CI. But to recap, uh, Gradio uh, applications running locally, deployed on spaces or shared with a share link, they are susceptible to certain security vulnerabilities if you are using Gradio 4.x, you know, anything, anything earlier than Gradio 5. And so um, all of these security issues to, to conclude have been fixed in Gradio 5 and verified by Trail of Bits. So we asked them to do a, a, fixed, review as, a fixed review as well. Um, and we've added a lot of you know, unit tests, security unit tests, fuzzing, a static code analysis tests to make sure that these issues don't regress. And of course, security is always something that's ongoing. Uh, we can patch things, you know, we can patch everything that we know about, but um, it's never, uh, you can never be certain that, you know, there aren't other security issues that will be discovered later. So we're going to keep working with the security community to fix any issues that arise in the future. So for now, if you're a Gradio developer or Gradio user, pip install upgrade Gradio. That will upgrade you to the latest version of Gradio with all of these issues that I talked about um, fixed. And if you are interested in learning more, check out the link below where we share the, the security report that Trailer Bits prepared. We're sharing it with everyone. Hopefully, if you're a you know framework developer, you can benefit from that knowledge as well, and that way you know we're, we can give back to the open source community. Thank you so much for uh, listening to this video, and let us know if you have any questions.